Okay, this might be a long one today because we're going to talk about currency, money. Money, 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 money. That's my era. You know, grew up in you know formative years and all the rest of that stuff. First time I. Okay, this is. First of all, it started out wrong for me. I'm not saying it wrong. Okay, here, here's how it started out. One time we had a family gathering. You know, everybody was there. Uncles, aunts, cousins, blah, blah, blah. Everybody was there. Uh, and uh, there was an a older gentleman. Uh, he happened to be born on my same birthday, you know, like uh, July 3rd. That's when he was born. I was born July 3rd. But he was like in his 60s at the time. He was an old man. You know, in fact, he may have been in his seven, whatever. He was long. He was old. But he was a reader. He, he could read, you know, he read. He read poems, but he could read you, you know. And and uh, I was about 12, 13, somewhere around there. Maybe then, 13, yeah, 12, 13. And uh, also, like I said, he was one uh, same day, but also he used to be a, a merchant marine. In fact, he was the guy that, okay, this is, I'm calling it straight as usual. And when I was in high school, I did a report. Um, this was years later, because I used to, after that, I used to just go, and he lived right across from, uh, from uh, like, like 132nd Street, and, um, and uh, Malcolm X Boulevard, I guess it's called Seventh Avenue at the time. Um, anyway, that's where he lived. And I would go to his apartment. I would go to his, his flat and just sit with him. I would say anything. I would just sit with him. He'd be talking. He'd just do whatever. Anyway, he, because he was a merchant marine, he, he knew a lot of languages and stuff like that. And I had gotten this pamphlet about Columbus, about Columbus not really discovering America, but we have, you know, he, he had, he, he's hanging out with the Moroccans, wherever, in North Africa, and they told him how to trade routes and whatever happened. So this was all in this pamphlet that was written in Arabic. Okay, and he translated for me, and I put it in a book report. Um, and when I went to school, and did business later when I was in high school, first year of high school, whatever. And um, at Theodore Roosevelt High School, up there in the Bronx. And the teacher wrote that it was a good report, but she didn't, and she gave me like a B minus, something like that. She, she would have, something like she would have gave me an A or something like that, but uh, because she didn't believe it. You know, it was all a reference to I me, mean, she said she didn't believe it. It was the fact, but she didn't believe it. She didn't believe facts. <sighs> it was a white teacher, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Okay, so anyway. So that was that. Anyway, at this reading that the um, that the, that my cousin, older cousin, was given, he he was reading everybody from age from the older people down. Then when he got to me, it's like a long. It, was, it took a long time to be reading. Got to me, he went and said, "All right, everybody, I want you to pay attention." He like stopped the thing. I'm going like, "Oh, I'm important. Wow, this is gonna be good." You know, this boy will never have any money. Lord, okay. Now this is a kid South Bronx, you know what I mean? I wasn't really a money clip, but I was aware of capitalism and the system I was in. I was aware that I was in the United States of North America and you had to have <laughs> you know, to get along. Well, <clears throat> that's not something I want to hear. But then the next person said, but he'll never need any. He'll always have a dollar in his pocket. Hmm. Hmm. I had to, well, I don't know what I was doing at the time. I know my mom was doing flips. I don't think I got past the first phase, you know. Anyway, so as it goes on, let me just keep, keep it on. So I had this really interesting thing with money. Let me do another aside. There's a um, guy, uh, Felipe Luciano, who was one of the original last poets. I don't know the poet group that, you know, you talk, you hit, and it's a poet group, a musical poet group. You know, they, 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 Brother Kane, uh, um, Nelson, uh, and, uh, and, and Felipe. Then there was an, an, another brother, uh, on the Wally, somebody like that. Uh, actually, I knew his son, of course, Pepsi, his son's mother was Pepsi Charles, I knew Pepsi, my mother, anyway, doesn't matter. Um, uh, uh, oh, anyway, so, uh, so Felipe once said, uh, he said, you know, this money thing, you know, the, the, the force that be is not your, you, you don't have any control over that. He said, if they wanted to change the money to rocks, they could. That sort of stuck with me. This one I was much older than, you know, it's like, you know, I was like in the 20s or something like that, whenever he said that. Uh, and uh, I'm going like, wow, that's, that's interesting. So let's stick with my mind. Now let's zoom more. Well, no, that's not nice to zoom. And, and lo and behold, I actually have been a lot of places, but I grew up in a certain era. It was weird. It was weird because my formative years up to about um, 
into my mid twenties, you know, you really didn't need any money. In the late sixties, early seventies, you really I would say you didn't need any money, but it wasn't a, a, an overriding factor. In fact, one time the great Bob Fast, you know, Bob Fast, you know, everybody looks at at, at uh, I'm going off again. I'm sorry. Uh, let me Bob Fast is just a legend. He's a legend in radio. Everybody talks about like Howard Stern, whatever. Have you. Howard, all of them, they got it from Bob Fast. This whole thing about you know freeform radio, whatever have you, that comes from Bob Fast. Believe me, believe me. Okay. I mean, Bob Fast one says that he tracked everything to the mid '70s, and how he tracked it was that when the rent started to go up. Remember, that's when the, 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 the Nixon took, took us all to go, off the gold standard in 1971. Anyway, about 1973, 74, and he started to feel it. But he said that that as as, as soon as it used to be a formula that like you wouldn't pay for your for your rent or your house, whatever have you, your bill, whatever, your housing bill, you wouldn't pay more than one third of your salary. But then, as at the at the end of the '70s, it started to go up and up and up. And so now you pay how much you you know. Your salary that you pay for rent or whatever have you. So that whole system that, that they have just went all around. Anyway, so I'm trying to say I grew up in an era where you really, you, it was on a cusp. You didn't really need any money, but you did need money. It's kind of strange. Um, even when I started to travel heavy in, uh, in the early 90s, uh, yeah, late, late, late days, early 90s, uh, there was a thing where you could take, like for instance, especially I'm in New York, you could uh, book a flight not book a flight, but you, there was these agencies where they would use your cargo space to move to move stuff. So, for instance, if they were sending a flight to, say, uh, Thailand or, or, or Mexico, I used to go to Mexico, uh, so Mexico, so you, you, they would book the flight in your name, right? You wouldn't pay any money. I, don't even, I think they even, at the beginning, they started to give you money. And so, basically, you just have a carry-on, and then they would use your luggage space to move whatever they, they're going to move. It was a great situation, so I travel a lot like that. You don't need money. Then when you go there, you just da, 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 a few weeks. You know, you go to a warm climate, and just carry one bag. In fact, when you travel, let me say when you travel. When you travel, I'm not talking as necessarily as a tourist, but I'm talking about more like as a um, as a traveler, as a backpacker, whatever have you. If you know you're going to a warm climate or whatever have you, then don't bring anything with you. If you don't even bring things like like like. Like even toothpaste, sometimes you get that on the airlines. You don't bring anything with you because when you go to that, that, that country, you can go to a little store and buy whatever the local shirt is, whatever have you, when you're leaving. Say you're there for three weeks when you, or two weeks, whatever, three days. You throw that shirt away, da da da. You see what I mean? In fact, okay, wait, wait a second. One of my favorite characters in, uh, in literature is, um, is this guy here. Remember his books here. <laughs> Giving you traveling tips now. Hold on a second. I know I'm talking about money, but this is money. Okay, Lee Child has this thing, uh, uh, his guy, Jack Reacher, okay? Um, this is one of his books. You know, uh, who's, who's the name? Um, what's that boy? Uh, Tom Cruise, he did the Jack Reacher thing, but the Jack Reacher books are very interesting. Anyway, so Jack Reacher. But Jack Reacher does, his whole thing is like, he only carries a toothbrush with him. You know, if he goes someplace, if he hit the bike, he's to buy a new shirt, new underwear, whatever have you. He just that's all, that's how he moves, that's how he rolls, you know. And you could do it too. Anyway, now I'm getting off as usual. Hold on, I'm coming back to the point. So I'm, I'm very aware of money, but also um, I'm a, I listen to a lot. Of, I listen to a lot of stuff, and especially in the early in the 80s and the, in the early 90s, I was listening to a lot of NPR, or whatever have you. But also, even before that, in the late 60s, I started to notice they put this Dow Jones up in the, in the news. They kept on putting these tickers Dow Jones. I'm like, I don't know anybody that's into the stock market. In fact, the only time I had dealt with the said dealt with the stock market was when I was in, living in Somerville, New Jersey, in the early 80s. 80s, I would be I um, had to get a New Jersey Transit uh, rail system goes from Somerville. To New York, in New York, of course, you go into Penn Station, and so all the, all the stock people, you know, they, they got to go to their Jersey homes, their Jersey shores, or wherever they. they got, so I see a lot of these people, and they would like sometimes they'd be like drunk and have to be rolled on the train to be helping. They would no, they would never get in any trouble. It's like they would protect these stock people, and there'd be a stock people. Look at the Wolf of Wall Street. I got it something. Look at the Wolf of Wall Street. It's kind of interesting. I mean, it really is the way it is. Because these people, they don't necessarily have any more education than you. Yeah, now that the high brows, you know, instead of going to pops, they go into, they went into, uh, uh, to the money, you know, to the banking sector. But now they're in the bank sector and decide they do like a revolving door, you know. So, so they really got the thing all sold up. So if you think you're going to make money in this system, you're not because you didn't create that system. You know, they can make it rocks, blah, 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 blah. Which I'm going to switch over to cri cryptocurrency in a second. So anyway, so I I basically existed in a good time frame, you know, like, like Yvette and, and 
Antonio would, would tell you, you know, there's a, I'm, I'm one of the boomer generations, but I'm like an outlier, a really an out, I'm an out outlier. I'm an outlier outlier. I'm the outliers outliers <laughs> for a number of reasons. Not at all and good. So anyway, uh, so I noticed this money thing, but it also, especially when I started, uh, when I first heard of Yvette Cornell, is that is when she was uh, dealing with Farrakhan on, on Boyce's channel. That's when I started following that. But I used to check out Boyce every once in a while. I was like, this guy, I wasn't really into him that much. But I always followed the, the money thing. For some reason, it's in the back of my head, you know. But I realized that, no, Boyce doesn't understand. To, to be in this, and I noticed, to be in the stock market, you have to have disposable cash. You can't just put all your money, you, you, you know, it's, it's, yeah. it's, it's like the house in the casino. You, you, you see? So anyway, Boyce. Blessing. My problem with boys is that uh, he should be going some other places. I don't need to know what he. There's a lot of other stuff he should be doing. Even when he jumped into cryptocurrency, he didn't really do it right. He just he didn't follow the thing. Anyway, and and I have this whole thing with. Uh, I, I listen to Max Kaiser all the time. Three times a week, Max Kaiser comes on. I'll put a link. But you you really need to check out Max Kaiser. Just listen to what he's saying. Okay, so now we 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 move along, and for some reason, uh, and I've always been supported by by people. Uh, and so, you know, I'm cool. And my family is kind of interesting because everybody has a little specialty. And I didn't inherit, like I said, the money genes. That went on to my younger sister. She like, she flushed, you know. She's, she's at the end of the baby boomer generation too, so she has to, but she's a hustler too. So I don't know if baby boomer would have helped her, helped her, it doesn't matter. She's a, she's a real hustler. So she got all those genes and that's, that's how that goes. Okay, so let me get to what I'm, I'm getting to. And so I started listening to um, Max Kaiser about 2014. Just it was just on. I had a TV at the time. I was at this place that had TV, so I watched RT. And I, then Max, I used to listen to him just because he's a he's a white. The first the program is a half hour. The first half is like uh, uh, Stacy Herbert, his wife. Uh, they talk in headlines, and they, he makes comment on it. And then the second, and he goes crazy. He does all kinds of wacky things. You know, he's calmed down lately. Uh, but then the second half, you know, uh, second 15 minutes, it's uh, he, he he talks to let's call it an expert in the field. Okay, really great program. So I wouldn't listen for. I'm not a money person. I just listen because he was entertaining, and he was like, I'm going like he thinks he thinks like I do, and he's comparable. So. So it was interesting just to follow it. So I've been following that since. It, so I've been following the whole cryptocurrency, everything like that. In fact, then what happened in my uh, my Debaza group, my research group, uh, what happened was they got into cryptocurrency, and so I had to sort of go into it in a second, it, it, just 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 the basics, you know. And what I advocate everybody do right now, no matter what, whether you believe in cryptocurrency or not, just get yourself a wallet. I mean, whether it's a virtual wallet or, or you, you get it get it secure and get a, a, a separate uh, you know a separate device, but get a get a wallet. As you see in all my posts, I say you know if you want to do, I don't ask for I don't ask for likes or shares or or for you to you know, subscribe or even to send money. I don't do any of that stuff. But I always have the cryptocurrency. If you want to put some um, Bitcoin or any kind, I think any any currency you can put into my wallet, it, it converts automatically. So uh, that's and I don't even ask for it. I just put it at crypto, cryptocurrency, something like Bitcoin donations, you know, blah blah. And I give my wallet thing. So you can do that if you want to. But I guess what? I don't even pay attention to it. It's, it's for research purposes. It's it's for my what they what they're doing in the Basel, I sort of have to be with it. So no matter whether you whether you're into crypto or not, you should just get a wallet anyway. Just have a wallet. Especially if you're online or something like that, just have a wallet. It put your thing so if people want to contribute to your channel or whatever they can. Okay, so I've been, I was following that. Then when I realized what what this whole uh, 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 crypto is really about is that it's it, it <laughs> much, currency changes all the time. Like it could change, they can change it to rocks. Well, this whole math the thing about crypto is a mathematical formula, and so you can't. Uh, so it's it's the bar. So you can't. I can't say can't say anything. But I'm saying no. So you can't really uh, abuse it. Like you can abuse money and all these schemes that people have. It's right there. You can't argue with the thing. It's 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 facts. You know. So so there. So so, so there you have it. So I think um, in this day and age, you need to. You, you, we we have to somehow not participate. And you can't, you know, in in this in this in these money schemes because um, I'm not talking about crypto. But these money, when I say the regular money system, because we didn't we didn't create it. 
and we we're, we're not and we're not generationally we, we don't know all the ins and outs and when they make a regulation whatever we don't have that many lawyers and and and, and politicians in that sphere so when they make things they know how to they put the trap doors um, if, you know I had to say have a trap door in the back of a, a computer program because you can get into it they have all kinds of things like that so I, I think the best thing for us to do especially now and bring it to ADOS the best thing for reparations especially for us that I, I made a posting on this on um, um, before. And it's, it's simple like this. We have our reparations too, but also in the crypto space, now let's talk about crypto space, they have, they have, they're not gonna be able to do anything until they reach a, a critical mass. So enough merchants and people get into that space where that, that can replace the, the, the monetary system that we have, right? But you have to be prepared for that. That's the whole other thing. But I'm saying that, but so they, so they need a critical mass. Now, if you have um, this grouping, ATOS, and they say, okay, we're, we're, we're petitioning the government to to get reparations, you know, uh, the debt owed, you know, so we, 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 we want the reparations, we want money, we want us uh, goods, and we want services. That's all part of the reparations. It's, it's, I call it it's just a debt to uh, collect them on the debt. But we can make a deal with the crypto space, you know, and say, look, why don't you set a fund aside, call your reparations fund for, you know, because even to, to, to get to where we got to today, it was based on America being built the way it's built, and these are the people that built it. And so we're going to set up a separate fund. We're not going to touch it. We're just going to start uh, getting into somehow you, I don't say tax it, but, but somehow some crypt, some coin or something like that, or even just the, the whole crypto community that says, yeah, we, we're for reparations. No, people can't access it now, but we're going to create something. I'm not. I'm just making it up as I go right now. You people in crypto space, you can figure out how, how to do this. Not to pay right away, just to, to have it. Or somehow, just to go, so, so we have a presence in the crypto space. So if this thing falls apart, we, 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 we'll have the, we have a, a choice to be in the crypto, they'll be in the regular space, and money do, and you know, they're going to really mess with that. And the crypto space. So we have a parallel thing going on. That's my idea. I think we should work on that. So anyway, so what I'm saying about money, whatever have you, we're so enamored with money, it blinds people. They don't understand. You you can do there's certain things you do with you can do without uh, without funds. You know, with just I won't say borrowing, but just with, with deals and stuff like that. But we're never going to be able to catch up to a system that was created that was created not by us. You know. Not by the people that built America, but the people that we were building America for. While we were building, they were scheming. They were scheming. They continue to scheme how to how to how to tort, how to keep on you know extracting from from this 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 grouping of people, this ADOS, and by extension, you know all dark peoples on the, on the planet. So that's a, a little message from me. T. From the Patterson taking trade, but let you know what I only suspect about money, 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 money from a desk of the ADOS, the American Descendants of Chattel Slavery.